New charges have been filed against the mother in the now infamous minivan shooting. Plus, a law named after a murdered student and enacted to help catch criminals is proving to be a big help for police. Also, the man investigators say brutally beat a female deputy faces a judge. We'll get to those stories in just a few moments. Good morning, I'm Kayla Ayers. And I'm Chris Gilson. It is Saturday, November 22nd. Thanks for joining us. And it's starting off as a pretty clear day. Yeah, we had a lot of clouds on your Friday afternoon. Didn't see any sunshine yesterday, but today's going to be a different story. All those clouds have broken up. Just some spotty showers in places like Roswell and Eddy County this morning to start here in Albuquerque, though. Dealing with some cold temperatures, a temperature of only 32 degrees and with a light wind out in the north at 5 miles per hour. It'll feel like it's in the upper 20s, so you want to bundle up if you're heading out the door for that early morning walk or run because temperatures only in the teens in places like Grants at 10 degrees, 32 in Las Vegas, the upper 30s and Ruidoso, and still holding on to the lower 50s in Hobbs at 52 this morning. Later on today, you're going to notice the winds picking up, especially around dinner time. So we do have wind advisories for Albuquerque, Santa Fe, down to Socorro and all the areas in yellow. Then high wind warnings in orange for gusts as high as 60 to 65 miles per hour. Then behind it, much cooler air. Just how cool is coming up in your forecast. A man Bernalillo County Sheriff's investigators say beat one of their deputies until she blacked out. Won't be getting out of jail anytime soon. I'm reducing the bond to $100,000 cash only. That should guarantee his appearance. Even if Joshua V. Hill can come up with all of that cash, a list of other charges will keep him behind bars for a while. V. Hill allegedly attacked Bernalillo County Deputy Deanna Young Wednesday night. She tried stopping him near Unser and Arenal after V. Hill sped through a red light, nearly hitting her cruiser. V. Hill refused to stop, leading Deputy Young to Toretta Drive off Tower in 98th. That's where investigators say she tased him, but it didn't work. V. Hill started grabbing her by the hair and punching her. He dragged her across the ground, hit her with the taser, knocked, kicked her in the head, and choked her while trying to get her gun. She eventually passed out, uh, passed out and V. Hill took off again. After a second chase, he finally crashed into a fence and was arrested. V. Hill's extensive charges include two counts of first-degree attempted murder, one for Deputy Young's beating and for trying to run down another deputy during the chase. Police have picked up two people they think might know something about the murder of a young mother. Ariel Ulibarri was stabbed to death at Goodwin Trails in Clovis. Ulibarri was with her six-year-old son earlier this week. Clovis police said they wanted to talk to Shannon Buckmaster and Lloyd Bagwell, but didn't say how they might be connected to the case. Officers took the couple into custody yesterday afternoon for questioning. At this point, they are not considered suspects. The pair was picked up just hours after two groups offered 15 grand for information leading to the arrest of Ulibarri's killer. Nearly 500 crimes have been solved thanks to Katie's Law, a law named after a murdered NMSU student. Katie Sepich was raped and murdered in 2003. New Mexico at the time didn't collect DNA from felony arrestees. Her killer, Gabriel Avia, wasn't identified until three years later when he was convicted of another crime. Katie's Law now requires DNA samples to be taken from anyone arrested for a serious crime. When we first started, we knew that it would be good. We knew that it would work, but now we have the proof. Now we can show, yes, it does work. It makes a difference. It really, really works. Governor Susana Martinez says there's been an 88% increase in DNA matches that have led to an arrest, all thanks to Katie's law. That's 478 cases since 2011. The NTSB and the FAA spent yesterday at the scene of the plane crash that killed an Albuquerque teacher and her pilot boyfriend. Here's a bird's eye view from Sky News 13. The plane went down last Friday south of Pagosa Springs, Colorado in the San Juan National Forest. The NTSB and FAA hope the plane's engine will give them more clues into exactly what went wrong. Melissa Watson and Howard Guthrie left Moriarty for Pagosa Springs when they were forced to turn around because of a snowstorm. And a small plane crashed in Los Lunas yesterday, not far from homes. It happened at the Mid Valley Airport just off the airstrip, which is surrounded by homes. State police say as the single engine plane was landing, a tire apparently gave way 
causing the plane to crash in an irrigation ditch and flip onto its roof. The pilot and two passengers were taken to the hospital. They're expected to be okay. The mother in the now infamous minivan shooting near Taos has been indicted for a second time in the case. Last year, a state police officer shot at Oriana Farrell's minivan as she sped off during a traffic stop. Her five kids were inside that van. Thursday, a Taos grand jury indicted her again on charges of fleeing and child abuse. A New Mexico Court of Appeals judge dismissed her previous indictment because of procedural issues. Farrell's attorney told us yesterday his client was acting out of fear, but even though he does not think the indictment is justified, he says they will not rule out a plea deal, which the DA is also open to. The state cop who fired at Farrell's minivan was fired. Someone's joyride caused thousands of dollars worth of damage on a golf course. And I heard this, and the guy come right up by my house and along my fence going back towards the, the street. It happened at the Santa Fe Country Club this week. A nearby neighbor saw a guy on a dirt bike leaving the course on Sunday. Then the country club found seven of the 18 greens damaged from the dirt bike doing donuts. The general manager says it'll cost at least $30,000 to fix, and since it's winter, the fairway won't fully be repaired for what'll likely be six months. The big part's going to be labor, staying on top of it, and materials to cover these areas while the sand and seeds down just to make sure they're protected from golfers. So it's an eyesore. The country club is offering a $2,000 reward for information leading to the culprit. By the end of this year, a dirt lot at the old Albuquerque Indian School will start to transform. Starbucks will be the first tenant on this plot of land on 12th and Manal. But this isn't a normal Starbucks. It's about double the size of a normal store. The Indian Pueblos Marketing Incorporated, which is made up of 19 Pueblos, has a lot of ideas for the area, and they say this is just the beginning. It puts validity in the side and lets people know that things are happening here and that it's not just a dirt field. The group just released this video showing a master plan for the site, which would include three big buildings for office space and another area for retail, dining and more.